Hi, I'm Pat. Welcome back to The Box. Today we have uh, Columbia River Tackle in and we're going to be talking about uh, kind of a new twist to an old lure. Um, Keith is here to talk about putting sculpin wings on a tube and I'll let Keith go from here. Thanks Pat, I appreciate you having us in. Um, we've been working with Pat here. Uh, we've been building the sculpin tubes for about three years now. Uh, here in Alaska, out in the Matanuska Valley, and to be used around the state and actually around the United States, we've sold them to a number of states. Um, working with Pat specifically on the on the different plastics, we use a lot of uh, different people's plastics. Uh, Pat has a, a lot more durable plastic than is typically found in tubes. Tubes aren't new; they've been around for a long time. They're, I mean, guys at Bass Fish, especially in Lower 48, know what the tube can do and know how versatile the tube is. Um, spent years as a fisheries biologist. I was actually uh, flying out of Anchorage uh, one night to go uh, to go um, to a, a sportsman seminar to preach, and I was I was thinking, man, if I could put pectoral fins on a jig, I, and th and this is where the idea came from, is having these these fins on the tube, and so these this the application for these is 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 vast, but we really like these during our ice fishing season in Alaska. They're a great bait. They're great for beginners. We'll talk a little bit about why that's important. And a lot of people are mesmerized by ice fishing. There's that hole in the ice. What are we doing? What's it going to take to catch that fish? And really, you can either uh, uh, be an advanced fisherman and use these and do great. You could be a novice and not know a thing and go out there and catch fish on a tube just because of some of the different things the tube can do. And so as we drop this six inch tube down here in the water, it's a hardwire purple haze UV enhanced tube and we see the tube just sitting there. It's what we're looking for. This technique here, where it's just sitting doing nothing, is called the dead stick, dead stick technique. It's just, the tube's just sitting in the water, it's there. Um, ice fishing, you're inside a tent maybe. Uh, you're not bothered by the wind, nothing like that. That thing is just riding just like that dead stick. And those predators, if you're fishing up off the bottom three, four feet, they'll come up and look at this tube and either decide if they want to eat it or not. Uh, you pick your rod up, and you can still dead stick, you can just hold it. If you're fishing with a depth finder and you're actually watching, actively watching your, uh, your fish come up and react to your tube, you can decide, boy, am I gonna, am I gonna try to uh, get that fish to strike? Am I just gonna hold there? It's, it's actually pretty exciting. For people that uh, struggle with uh, excitement in fishing, ice fishing will do it for you, especially if you can watch, uh, watch the fish come up and react to your bait. So we're just dead sticking there. You pick your rod up, and what we really like to do with these blades is just open them up. And to open them up, I'm going to take my rod tip here. I'm just going to drop it straight down. It's not a big drop with my, uh, with my arm. I'm not waving my rod up and down. I'm actually just taking my wrist and just dropping it down just a little bit. And I'm going to get those blades just to open up. Just a little bit. And as they flare out, you can see it'll draw those, those predators and come in and inspect that bait. So it's just a quick drop there, just like that, just a little bit, just trying to think in your mind if I could just drop that bait straight down just a little bit and open them up and then let it ride again and let those fish come in and check it out. Uh, if, I don't get a, if I don't get a bite after a little bit, I'll, I'll move my bait. Um, if you're, there's a lot of products on the market. Um, Jaw Jacker's one, HT has some different uh, rod holders, some that are spring loaded that, that'll help set the hook for you. You could use a tube in that application uh, for sure to dead stick and to have your, have your tube just, just riding. You pick your tube up, you want to jig it up and down, totally fine. You can do that, that's what it looks like, just moving it up and down like that, and then just let it sit there. You said if you didn't get a bite right away, you'd uh, probably change something. Would you change colors in it, or would you change techniques? So, so with, with ice fishing, I, what I've found, Pat, is, is when I go and I'm, and I'm uh, uh, we'll, we'll look for contours, um, usually, if I don't get a bite right away, I'm either going to change change my uh, change my lure, depending on if it's a bait or a baitless lake where you can't use any bait. I'd add bait to it if I if it was legal to do so, uh, or maybe try in a different color. Um, if it if I had a glow on, I might try one that it's not a glow. If I put one on that was a solid that wasn't glowing, I would put one on that was that was uh, uh, had a glow color or a white something like that. I'd try to try to change. If that, if that didn't work, then I'd, I'd probably move. I'd try to move a little bit. You don't have to move very far. Uh, the fish aren't going to move a, a long ways if you're fishing a contour. So say you're fishing like, if you can imagine a hillside, and say you're fishing kind of the top of the hill, you'd want to move out a little bit and a little bit deeper and just work in 
10, 15 foot increments and fish down, down, down until you find where the fish are. Um, you know, if you do find the fish and they're not pretty much interested in a six incher, what about a four inch or a smaller one if they get a little lethargic as the winter wears on? Again, going back to our fisheries uh, background, uh, bait fish come in all different sizes and they and the cohorts, which is the, the year classes of these bait fish, they change. And so you have, uh, so, so right now in Big Lake, we got sockeye spawning in Big Lake. Uh, here soon, they're, they're swimming around looking, uh, making beds. We'll have little sockeye and they'll start out really small and then they'll get bigger and they'll get bigger. And so as the, as the year goes on, your bait fish sizes change. So it's like, well, why do I got to have all these different sizes? Well, you're trying to, uh, the fly guy's been using the same for a long time, match the hatch. We're trying to get a bait similar to what we're, we're chasing. Um, you can intimidate a fish by having too big a bait down there, or you can excite a predator fish saying, hey, man, we've got them here. Uh, we've got it made. Uh, later in the season, sometimes, when or, or say if uh, angler pressure is high, or say you have actual pressure system come in, and uh, it puts the fish off a little bit. One of the ways to, to go into a finesse mode is to use a smaller bait. And so going from a six to this four, also in purple haze here, dead stick, and then just a the quick drop. And if you're down on the bottom, you can actually, you can tap those, tap those blades down there on the bottom if you want. I prefer fishing up off the bottom because I like to see the predators come up and react to the bait. Um, but I've, I, I'll, sometimes if I'm looking, I'll go down and hit bottom real quick and, and then come back up. But having different sizes helps a whole lot too. And uh, we've we used these baits for pike, lake trout, uh, walleye, bass, crappie, perch, rainbow trout, Burbit. brown trout, burbot in Alaska, love these things. Um, and you can, you can fish them in a bunch of different configurations. There's uh, some lakes where there's no bait allowed, Every, everything's in the lure, <laughs> everything's in the lure. And I, I really like tubes of, because of their versatility. Um, and a lot of fish will hit them and they just, they just look great. And just a little bit of action really gets those, uh, gets those fins standing out. And again, go back to dead stick and just let it sit. And you can stick in the rod holder, you can drink a cup of coffee and watch and, and just watch your rod and have fish just come up and crush it. And again, don't be afraid, uh, don't be afraid to try different things. Uh, don't be afraid to, um, so again, let's say you're fishing shallow and you just, just decide to side action on this thing and get those blades to turn. Get that fish or get that tube to kind of roll over on its side a little bit. And don't be afraid to, to experiment and, and try different colors. Again, if you have a handful of colors, um, you want to, um, again, a glow, a, a white, a, a chartreuse are great. I'd always, I'd always have a dark in my, in, my, in my bag, whether it was a black or a green pumpkin. Um, I would always have a dark. A, a purple, too. I mean, sometimes dark purple is great. But you always want to have a, have, have a dark in there uh, uh, just, just in case. It can, be the, it can be something that could save your trip where you're not getting hit on other things. Um, if you're going to add bait to it, sometimes we'll use um, up here, uh, whitefish is a real popular uh, where it's legal to use. And you're just using a strip. You don't want to use like, a, uh, like cat fishermen use like a big piece of chunk bait. Or if you're out fishing for uh, a halibut and you take that herring and cut it in half, we don't want to be doing that. Uh, we don't want to fill up this hook gap. Again, we're not fishing with a real monster hook. On the six inch, we have a six aught hook. Uh, this one is a uh, four aught, it, which, which is a three eighths ounce uh, weight in the four inch. In the six inch, it's a six aught with a three quarter ounce. The six inch tube is, is right at two ounces total weight. But you don't want a lot of meat filling up that hook gap because you want to be able to stick that hook in your fish. So kind of kind of thinner uh, pieces of, of fillets, that kind of thing for your for your bait work really well. And what about a scent? So if I had a smear on scent or if I took something like some uh, halibut uh, butt juice or something like that with the injector, the plastic's tough enough where you can actually inject the plastic over and over and it'll leach out over time. Yeah, as, as a great, uh, it just made me think of a joke. Old fishermen never die. They just smell that way. And a part of the reason for that is because all the scents they carry around, right? And so you're saying, well, maybe I don't have 
um, maybe I don't have uh, this kind of, of fish, but I have a, I have a herring. I have a, maybe even a crawdad scent, a shrimp scent uh, that I can just rub on this plastic and really enhance your bait. And sometimes it's just enough to mask the human scent of you handling it, That's putting right. it on. That's so. right. Yeah, you want the edge. I mean, where, where, where you get it and, it, and it really comes into play in, in high pressure, whether it be weather or due to angling pressure. If you're fishing in a tournament situation, you're fishing the scow out on Big Lake, and you can't use bait, and you can't use scent, and you can't do these things, you're trying everything you can uh, to, to get that big charter bite. Well, uh, I want to thank you guys for watching. As obviously, you can find it at um, ColumbiaRiverTackle.com or HardwireTackle.com, both the 4-inch and the 6-inch tubes. If you guys have any questions, any at all, please shoot us an email or text us something. You can find us on Facebook as well and Instagram. So um, thanks for watching and I hope to hear from you. Thanks.